Okay, yeah, we are here. Yeah, so please, if I'm not loud enough, it's just because you need, and please tell me. Uh, yeah, so uh, our previous uh, lecture was about recursion dynamic programming. And today we are going to be deeper in this term. And my goal today is make you really friendly and comfortable with dynamic programming. I will show you frameworks and uh, you and we together go through different examples and I show you how to solve these examples. And I hope that uh, you, at the end, you will feel very good with understanding how you can get and touch with difficult problems. And uh, yeah, I also ask you to be involved and I'm going to ask some questions during my presentation, like what should be this function or what should be next step? So be prepared. <laughs> I need your contribution here today. Okay, so let's start. Our goal, as I said, uh, to reach and uh, to be very friendly with dynamic programming. And uh, what is dynamic programming? Dynamic programming is one to achieve the goal uh, to make a brute solution more comfortable with complexity. So instead of exponential complexity, we want to achieve polynomial complexity. And uh, for example, exponential is uh, two, two in power of n, it goes to quadratic. And sometimes we can achieve even linear complexity. And in examples that we are going to look today, it will be this effective case. We will achieve linear complexity resolving issues with dynamic programming. Um, how to recognize the problem? Dynamic programming tasks have two properties. It's optimal substructure and uh, overlapping problems. What does mean optimal substructure? That means that you can define your program with difference, uh, your structure, your data that come in. They could be granulated. They could be granulated as parts. For example, we looked at previous lecture on Fibonacci problem and their numbers could be granulated. Uh, I going to use this adorable thing and I would say that optimal structure is that means that you have uh, you have some set of data set one and uh, on the next step you have set of data set two that uh, depends of the first set and etc. That's what I'm trying to call like optimal substructure and overlapping problems. If uh, you remember Fibonacci numbers, that was one, one, two, five, yeah? Uh, we could know that five could be computed by summarize two as result as, uh, so, we summarize result. Uh, oh, sorry, here is three. And here is eight, yeah? And we know that next step three, it's a summer of, uh, of result. So one plus two and five is result two plus three. So they are overlapping because you can use previous result. How to recognize the problem? Uh, if you look at problem, if you read the def definition of the problem, you could see some patterns like it could be combinatoric problem or it could be optimization problem. Questions can sound like how many or what is the minimum? 
So how many ways to make a change? How many ways to traverse the graph? How many steps needed to get from point A to point B? And optimization problems like what is the minimum number of steps needed to get from point A to point B? What is the maximum profit gained by choosing which way? The simplest problem. Compute sum of first n elements. Uh, it uh, could be solved as arithmetic progression, but here we would solve it as a dynamic programming task, even if we can solve it uh, just in one array. Yeah, but it's really, it's really simple to start this problem, like a base case. We want to compute sum of first n elements. So if we would write down how our steps looks like, uh, we will see that f5 is 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. We go to previous step and we see that, so f5 is the same that f of 4, but we just need to plus 5. So we can use result of previous function, yeah? And uh, we can start from 0. So we can define the function for our k step. So f of k is f of k minus 1 plus k. Yep. Base case is 0. We can start from 0. And uh, if k is 1, we just say that we want to summarize 0 and 1. And uh, you don't have to recalculate from beginning because you can use the result of previous function. So this, exam this example is very, very simple. And the interesting thing that it even could be asked on phone screen interview. Uh, yep, I put solution there. So how we can program it as dynamic programming? Uh, first of all, we create the array with answers. Why we create array of these answers? Because uh, we want to memorize previous answer to find the next one, yeah? Uh, we could even solve it without array, but let's look at array right now. Uh, so the sum of first element is zero. Uh, it will be zero because in Python we created array of zeros. Then we go to first element. We say that first element is element zero, that is zero, plus one. Yeah, in this loop. And uh, when we reach n elements, we just return the last element. So we return the result that will be f of five, and it should be stored. It's uh, stored in uh, sums as the last element of sums. Okay. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions so far. Okay. Uh, because it's, uh, it's important to understand this example. So let's look at warming up task. I would call it warming up task. Uh, yeah, I'm going to share my lead code right now. And as I said today, I expect you to be involved during the presentation.
Okay, so let me let me read task lab. So given an array nums contain n discrete numbers and return the only one number in the range that is missing from the array. Uh, so we need to check which one is missing. For example, we have array of three, zero, and one, and we see that two is missing. So we need to return it. And uh, one of the simple solution is uh, create missing numbers uh, function that also use some helper function. And helper function is just sum of first elements. So we want to define some of these first elements. And uh, then we define the sum of all elements in the array. And then we just, uh, we just need to subtract uh, sum from sum of n elements. That uh, should bring us the answer. And uh, yeah, it's uh, half ready, but I put here some space for sum of first elements. Yeah, so I know that I showed it, <laughs> but uh, I want now to check your concentration. What should I type here? And you can also turn on your microphone and set me, or you can put in the chat. What do you want? Okay. Anybody? If you don't know Python, you just can say how, how it looks like or what will be inside the array or what the size of the array. Oh yeah, okay, thank you, Emma. Oh, that's correct. Uh, we just create some of zero elements. Now we want to compute some of these elements. And we just uh, go through this range. So what is the range about? Where we should start and where we should end? Here should be the first number that we start from and the last number. Yeah, great. Thank you from one to N, thank you. And now the trickiest part is our function. How we should create uh, this summer, this sum, how we should compute the result from previous numbers. Uh -huh, one plus i plus one minus n. Mm. Uh -huh. Yeah, thank you, Emma, that's correct. Uh -huh. And some i plus one. Uh, okay, so sum i minus one. Let's say that's it, yeah. So, okay, thank you for your response because now I can see that I need a little bit more to explain. Uh, so, first of all, our array is zero, zero, zero uh, because our n is three. Uh, it's even uh, it's three, but uh, here we put four. So in this function, it's even four because here we say three plus four plus one. 
Okay, uh, y plus one because I just want to save. Uh, yeah, because uh, we have one number missed, but we have all, also zero. So that's why our n is one time more than uh, length of original array. Yeah, so we say like this. Oh, sorry, that's Python syntax. Um, yeah, so we create this array. Now we know that the first sum of zero, yeah, sum of zero is zero. Now sum of first of first two elements, so zero and one. It will be like sum of zero and one, and it's sum of zero plus one. Yes, yeah, so this is zero plus one. So this is one. Okay, we compute sum of one. Next, our n is two. Now we need to compute. Um, we need to compute sum of two. So we say that we want previous result that is one plus two. Yeah, and this is three. And uh, now we put here that sum of two is three. And now we need compute three. Uh, so sum of three is uh, three, that sum of two. Yeah, so we already know sum of sum of uh, three numbers, if n is three, uh, is if n is two, sorry, uh, and plus three, yeah, and this is six. So now we put here that sum of three is six. Yep, and uh, let's return here and put what we achieved. So this is zero, this is uh, one, this is two, uh, this is three, and this is six. And uh, it's our results in memory. So we used here the method that called memoization. So we put in memory results that uh, results, previous result of uh, new sum. Uh, we store in like steps, steps that we computed, we store in it here. And uh, now what should we return? Yeah, 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 so there was a question. We have len plus my number, yeah is a number and we return sum but uh, which one because uh, we computed sums for everything so what we need to return yeah that's correct yeah and we return sum of three in our example which is six and uh, yeah, that's it. If we go now to just sum, yeah, we receive here three, zero, and one. So sum will be four. And uh, when we, we want to compute result, we compute six minus four, and this is two, and this is missing number. And let's just run it. Yep. Okay, so this was basically a very simple case when you already can go with dynamic programming. Um, who can suggest uh, if I could compute it in something different way? For example, do not use array. How it could be changed?
Okay, I give some hints. Yes, yes, that's it. So we can create constant. Uh, we could say what will be the first, the first value of this constant. Yes, thank you, Nina. Uh, yeah, and then we just say instead of sum of nums, uh, sums of i, we just say that constant just uh, the previous result, yeah, and uh, i. Yeah, that's it. Oh, I think there was an idea to say i plus one. <laughs> yeah, in this case, we lost something. We lost uh, track of our results. But uh, yeah, we could, if you, so why I want to highlight it here, if you solve dynamic programming problem with memorization, so you just understand, okay, I need to compute different steps. I need on different steps this one and this one and this one and then your solution is ready and you think how i can optimize it more and if you see that you can just use constant it's also good you just simplify it more uh, in this case you lost these steps but if you don't need them you can go in this way as well and it still will be dynamic programming task because you use previous result when you compute result. Um, and this one is called, as I said, memorization. Okay, I'm, I'm happy that we did it. So let's go to the next. Uh, I always need to swap it. Oh, sorry. Now staircase problem. That's my favorite problem. And several years ago, when I tried to solve it, I was confused and I spent so much time to try to understand what the formula, why this formula looks like this. And uh, it was, um, it was shame on me how many time, how much time I spent on it. Uh, and uh, today I'm going to tell you how to think about this problem to understand formula quickly. So the staircase problem, uh, sorry, that staircase, uh, how many distant ways can you climb to the top? Can you climb one step or two step? How many, so you can climb only one step or two steps? So the task is how many steps you can do. Uh, when I starting to think about this problem, I starting to think like, okay, uh, if I have, okay, let's, let me think with base case. Uh, in the first step, I have only, one step yeah one yeah one step basically uh, if i have two it will be one step and one step or just do two steps if i have three it's um, okay it's one plus one plus one or two plus one still seems okay if i have four Okay, how it looks like one plus one plus one plus one and etc. Uh, let's think in different way. Mm. Yeah, as I said, basis like this, but also let's start from the top. So if I came here on the top and uh, I know that I have only, I have to do only two steps if I'm here one step if I hear. So I have two possibilities to come to this to this point. And uh, 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to compute how many steps I need to come to n minus one step, yeah? And uh, the same for n minus two. So here as well, I have, I have uh, two possibilities. I can come with one step from i n minus two, or I can come with two steps from n minus three. Yep. Um, okay. Now I understand that my formula looks like this. Oh, sorry. So it's uh, n plus, so it's f at n minus two plus f at n minus one. Uh, okay. Uh, do you have questions so far? Uh, so where we can came with Aka? Yeah, I have question. Uh, sorry, I don't understand the concept of the question. The concept of of the question. Uh, the So the concept, let's uh, think about it again. Yeah, uh, we on the top and we look down. So we don't try to understand from the bottom, yeah, how we can climb on this stair, but we, um, we stand up on the top on the nth step and we try to understand how, how many steps uh, we did how many how we could how we could come here and i see that okay i could make only one step if i was on previous step yeah and i also have possibility to do two steps so if i it means that i could do two steps from previous one yeah uh, uh, yeah it's uh, f n minus two, so it's here. Mm, let me use pen. So here is f at f o n minus two, yeah? And here f o n minus one. And I need to summarize them because if I summarize them, I understand how many, so how many different ways I could, I could use to come here. Uh, okay, that's fine. So framework that can help us to identify these cases. Um, sorry, framework that can help us to work with the problem. First of all, identify base cases. So the first step, uh, the second step, that's the basis. Then recursion relation, that's our function. Then order of computation, if we go from bottom to bottom up or from top to down, and location of the answer. Uh, here, location of the answer is F at F O N. Uh, steps, uh, recursion function, this function, and uh, our basics, our base cases is here. Uh, let's go to our lead code and I will show you. Yeah, keep this please. Um, Okay, so this is climbing stair problems. And look at the code again. What we doing here? We say that we want our function be like f 
O n minus 1 plus F at O n minus 2. This is Fibonacci problem uh, for, for those person, those who want, was on the previous event. Uh, you can look at this problem again. And uh, here is a uh, solution one more time. So we compute all answers. Uh, first of all, we say that we have a zero array. Then we need to define base cases. If one, we just return one. If two, we just return two. Uh, uh, but otherwise, we say that uh, we start to compute uh, to collect uh, to collect numbers in our array. And now uh, we're starting from three because we need to go two steps to re return these two steps, go two steps back. So we want to start with three. Uh, and that's it. We start to collect answers. Uh, let's print answers and we just will track them. And uh, we start from, from three. Yep, let me run it. Uh, okay, that's because it's very small. <laughs> yeah, so if we have only one step, we will we return one. If we have two steps, okay, we return two. And uh, let's try these 10 steps. Okay. Let me reload it. Oh, test case. Oh, okay. It's because you're missing an S. You have answer instead of answers. Oh. So it's saying it's not defined. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, I'm happy that there are people involved. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, now you see exactly this Fibonacci consequence 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34. And the last 89 is our decision. So, as our solution. So, here is where answer allocated. Yeah. Okay. Advanced question How to solve without array? Can we solve it without array? With recursion and helper function. Yes, that's correct, but um, there could be more optimization. So we could do start the previous result. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. Uh, yeah, so instead of uh, answers i minus one and answers i minus two, you use two constants and you update these constants. Yeah, okay, let's continue. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I will resume this slide. I will go straight away to this slide. Okay, and I'm going to swap them. Okay, I put here, so so there was uh, 
in chat three solution to solve this problem. First of all, a recursion and function. Yeah, I would share the slides with you, of course. Uh, then uh, to store everything in array, this is memorization method and uh, use two constants. And this is three, uh, three different approach. And I also put in slide a link to Python examples. Uh, let's go next. Uh, as I said, uh, okay, I set it here. Uh, framework, base cases, recursion relation, order of computation. So when we go actually for cut, we go from button to top. So that was fine enough for us. And location of the answer. Okay, let's go next. Uh -huh. Now, if we have one, two, and three steps as a choice, what would be the formula? I prepared this place here for you. Okay. Uh, anyone? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, we're here. That's right. Uh, okay, the first attempt. Mm, but that's still for two cases. Yeah. That was one of attempt, but uh, it's for two cases. It's for one and two. So what else do we need? Yes, that's correct. Thank you, Elena. Uh, yeah, F n minus three. Uh, okay, why? Because now we have three opportunity to come to the top. Okay, let me draw. Can I draw here? Okay, I can draw, but. Also, okay, one more thing. What if we have one, two, three, and five steps? One more question, and they go to explanation. So it will be very similar. I, as a hint, I need to change only one thing here. Okay, one more, one more minute. I, I, okay, Emma, thank you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, okay, let me return to this presentation more. And uh, yeah, I want to swap them. Yeah, here. Uh, yeah, here I can use my pen. So, uh, so now the first part. Yeah, I have three steps as possibility. Here is n step. Here is n minus three. 
uh, here is n minus two and here is n minus five. So I start here on the top, I looking down and I thinking, okay, how we can, how I could come here again. So I could come here from this step and uh, it's only one step, yeah. From here, it's when I could do two steps. And from here, because here I could do three steps. Okay, so let me draw more complex example. <laughs> uh, and again, four, three possible steps, yeah. Um, so for three steps, I could come here from one step, from two steps, or from three steps, yeah? I couldn't go from here. Uh, but here, I could come again from one step, two steps, and three steps. And here as well, I could come from one step, from two steps, from three steps. That's why every time I need to summarize these three results. These three results. Uh, okay, let me erase this. Song. And uh, what about five? Yeah. Uh, what about five? Uh, so it also. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, for example, yeah. N, N minus uh, six, uh, minus five, minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay, sorry. It wasn't right. Uh, the previous one minus one. Here is minus two, here is minus three. So this is n minus one, n minus two n minus three, n minus four, n minus five, n minus six, so six, six step down. Okay, sorry for this pause. Uh, now we're looking from here and we know that we could do one step, two steps or five steps, yeah? Uh, one step, it could be from here, two steps, it could be from here, and five steps, it could be from here. So we need to summarize these, these five, uh, these three results, because we have three possibilities, three different, yeah? So we could, we need to summarize these three results. Yeah, I hope it's, uh, now it's, uh, Good understanding. If you still have questions, please uh, let me know. How can I explain it more? Yeah, and I hope you. Now it's good. You you feel friendly <laughs> with this staircase problem. Uh, okay, that was not all. <laughs> now let's look at optimization problem. Uh, now we would like to say what will be the minimum cost of climbing stairs. And uh, we say that, okay, if you're climbing on the first step, you need to pay $10 to go to next step. On the next, on the second step, you need to go, you, you need to pay 15, 15 pounds to go to next step. Or one step or two steps, and etc. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, look at this question. Um, oh, okay. What? What should be the first one? Yeah. 
I, first of all, I will explain how we would work with it, with uh, baseline. Yeah, base cases. Uh, okay. Okay, please everything. Let's, uh, let me read loud task. If I'm disappearing, please let me know. Yeah, okay, here I prepared everything. Uh, well, let me read this task. Again, you are given an integer array cost of cost of each i step of a staircase. Uh, when you pay the cost, you can either climb one or two steps. You can either start from the index zero or step in with index one. So uh, be attentive here. You pay cost and then you climb. So you don't need pay if you already here. And you can start on 10. That means um, you paid zero when you on 10 on the first step. If you're on the second step, you still pay zero because you can start from this step. But if you want to go from the step that cost you 15, you need to pay 15 and then you can go, then you can go on the next step. Uh, here in example, you just go through steps which um, cost you one, one dollar, one pound, how it's more comfortable. So one, 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 and uh, uh, here, is, here you do step here. So at the end, you pay only six, uh, six uh, like cost of minimum cost to climb the stair. Uh, I hope uh, it's clear. And uh, now let's define base cases. Uh, what should be, what do you think should be the best cases? Okay, uh, I think it seems a bit more tricky. So I would give a hint that base case is zero and zero because you don't need to pay for the first, for the first two steps. You don't need to pay for them. That's why it's base case zero and zero. Sometimes you could be asked uh, the question if if you can, if you need to pay every time when you already do step on this, okay? Uh, but here we don't need to pay if you're already on this step. So base case is, is zero and zero. Uh, recursion relation, how we would define it. Uh, we would say that uh, we want definitely minimum. And what is the minimum? The minimum is uh, to climb on this step or this step. And uh, yeah, that's it. So we want to, we already on this step and minus two, and we pay we pay for climbing on this step. Uh, so this, this is here. We on the step f n minus two, and we pay the cost that uh, inside p array. Yeah, we pay the cost, and that's our first first choice. The second choice is to be on this n minus one step and pay 15. And uh, yeah, we need, we know that, so we know that we came on this step, we already paid something. We already paid something and we store it in this f n minus one function. We already paid it, but we need to pay more to climb. We need to pay more to do next step. That's why we say that result of this function plus uh, cost of climbing this step, and then we go. Okay, that's our recursion relation. Uh, order of computation, we can start from zero, we can start one by one, 
and we just store um, results that we compute. And the location of the answer is our last, last result in our array. Okay, so let's start with coding. What should I put here? First of all, even simpler, what should we return if we have only one? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's great. We return zero. And here we say that answers of uh, what? The first step, so... So here our first step. That's why zero, because we return zero. Uh, if we have only one step, we don't need to re we don't need save everything. We just return zero. Okay. If we have only two steps, what should we return? Uh huh. Yeah. Thank you, Emma. And uh, the same here is defined answer from da 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 da. That's the answer that we are going to use on next steps. And this is now, but uh, yes, yeah, that's great. So yeah, we define our best cases. Mm. Uh, now we need to, yeah, it's the bucket could be later, but now, okay. So we defined the first two steps. What should be our range? It's very similar to previous tasks, so. Yes. Mm, I would say, uh, yes, it's correct, M plus one. And uh, yeah, the last, the most complex thing. So the function, what should I put here? So I can remember that my cost in array of cost. Mm. Let me give hints. Ah, okay, it's a, okay, yeah. So I want to find minimum, yeah? That's why that should be the first thing. And Python have minimum function. Yeah, oh, I have, I have a full function. Uh, yeah, thank you, Emma. Okay. It, almost right. Uh, if you look at this slide, we need something else because, um, okay, that should work if we, for example, if we already paid, yeah? But we need to, as I said, we need to pay for this step. Uh, we need to pay for this step to climb further. So we need also, at this point, otherwise it should be just zero every time, yeah? In this case, it will be always zero <laughs> because it's zero and it's zero. So when we came here, what should we also add here? I'm sure that now you have, that you have answer.
Yeah, that's correct. Thank you. Um, yeah, let's try. Okay, that's wrong. Why that's wrong? And I put here some dividing. Um, yeah, test case the same. Okay, let's look. Um. Ah, we need to start from two. I think we need to start from two. Oh, no. Ah. Yeah, thank you. Sorry. Today I... So excited. Sorry, Miss Paulson. And yeah. Line 16. Uh -huh. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, Only when yeah, we're here. Yep. Um so that's correct. Let's add more cases. So for example, if we have here one more step five. Our result will be 20. Let's check. Mm -hmm. 15 and 20 and the last one 20. And now let's say that here is 15. But, uh, uh -huh, 20, yeah. Not steam five, but here is ten, for example. So to come here, I it will be twenty again. Let's do like this. So we should do only two pay for only two things. So it will be eighteen. Let's check. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's return. Uh, the card is here and I also going to send you. And uh, yeah, to do so one more thing. Uh, we can also think how we change our solution if we need to pay just after one climb, after one climb step. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are going to define here base cases, and uh, I involved your I involved your uh, concentration here. So we now know that when we came on the first step, uh, we already should pay. So when we step on the first step, we already paid ten pounds. On the second step, we already paid fifteen pounds. Yeah. 
how our base cases are going to change. What should I put here? Uh, one. So yes, F at one. Mm, and uh, what I put in the result, I put 10 because now I should pay when I only, only come on this, when I only come on this step, I already should pay. So now it's 10. And uh, the second step, what about the second step? What it is? If you look on this example, yes, that's correct. It's 15. Now, next thing. Okay, I can claim on, uh, I can do one step or two steps. How now my recursion function changed. I need to find, I still need to find what is the minimum cost. Yeah, so F uh, O N should be still minimum. But um, what should be there? As I know that I can, again, I can came from this one or from this one, and I already paid for it. So I already paid for this one and for this one. So what should be the minimum of? As I already know that I paid for it. Yes, thank you, that's correct. Yeah, it's F of N minus two and F of N minus one. Yep, and now I need to pay. And remember that our, okay, I put here 10 and five, but uh, I need to say P of one, so P is our on what we pay, yeah, and P or two. So, because P is uh, 10, 15, and 30. So, what should I put here? So, I need now pay for this, for this step. Yes, that's correct. Great. This is our function for this case. It's a slightly different, but uh, it also could be your interview task. Yeah. So order of computation, you can go as well from bottom. And it also could be set like bottom up. Okay, and where is our answer according to this framework? Uh, it's definitely F, but it's F by N. So it's just as a list. Uh, as a last uh, result, we don't need to say plus one. And uh, here we say n, not n minus one, because it's our nth step, nth step. Yeah, think about it like nth step. So at nth step, in this case, we pay p of n. It will be, so for this example, it will be 30. And uh, 
our ones are located as a last element. Okay, great, we did it. I'm happy that we did it. Uh, maximum subray. Okay, it's very quickly. Uh, we did this task before in the previous uh, session. And what I want to, I want just, uh, just uh, quickly revisit it and show you Python code and uh, show you how it could be inked in um, this framework. So the task was we were given an array. We wanted to compute uh, sum of the maximum sum, the largest sum of subarray. And our solution, uh, it was the same, but just on Kotlin. In Python, we create uh, dynamic programming, I call it, with this array, with answers. So again, when we want to store answers, it's called memoization method. We could just use recursion function and do not store it in array. But in this case, uh, we could uh, do a lot of uh, mm, recursion invocation and it's uh, difficult to use previous result. But uh, here we store previous result. Uh, yeah, and uh, we just uh, compute maximum of current number, uh, current sum of current subarray, uh, and check the next number in this array. And we collect all these results and uh, as a maximum, we should find the maximum among results. Yep, that's the difference. The difference here, and that's why it's it's a di it's slightly it's a slightly more difficult to understand how to solve this problem. So dynamic programming can recursion here because you compute. Uh, you just go one by one and then you compare your sum with next number. For example, minus two, one, minus three, four. Here we have um, four more than even result of previous one and etc. And uh, our answer located as the allocated maximum of all these results. Uh, if we go to here is solution on slides, and if we go to framework base case, uh, we just start from zero. Uh, we define recursion function, and uh, we go with bottom to top, and uh, the answer located at the same place where is maximum. Yeah, it's how the previous task could be resolved with this framework. Oh, okay. So we have 90 minutes. Uh, so we have 11 more minutes and that's the, the last question here. And let's try. Uh, let's try, is it? Yeah, I have it already. Uh, okay. We'll uh, solve it from zero. Uh, but uh, I want to... I want to show you how to think about it. And before we start, again, do you have any questions? Do you want maybe instead of solving one more task, just to visit any of this task? So put in the chat, or, or maybe you just already overloaded because we solved four tasks today. So put in the chat if you want to continue with one more task or you want to revisit something. Mm, okay, uh, put plus in the chat if you want to go to the task. Okay, <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, so 
Okay, one wait for task. Anybody else? Yeah, okay, we have. Okay, okay. Okay, two people enough <laughs> for me. Uh, again, if you have any questions, you can put it in. Okay, three people. Okay, that's great. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go then. Mm. Uh, yeah, so this is medium task. Uh, and uh, let me first of all explain task. It's, it's very interesting. I like this one. So we went to encoded string that uh, was decoded. How it was decoded? Uh, uh, okay, by search, we need to find how many ways to decode it. Uh, so we have some rules like A is one, B is two, and Z is 26. Yeah. Uh, and uh, for example, if we want to encode, encode A, A, G, F, uh, we could we encode it as one because A is one, one, then 10 because G is 10, and F because F is six. So just in order how, how numbers come in uh, alphabet. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we want to decode this in our in our solution. For example, if we have S as 12, we could decode it in two ways. A, B, because it's one and two, or just one letter, one, just one uh, L. Okay, uh, four, two, two, six. Uh, okay, it could be 26, so it could be Z and B, yeah? Then um, it could be B, B and uh, F because two, two and six. And one more solution, 22 and six and 22 is B and the F. So we have three ways to, three ways to encode this. Uh, okay how we can solve this problem. Let's think about it. Example, we have A, A, D, L, yeah? And it's encoded like one, one, four, twelve. Now I again, I can climb in stair climbing problem. I go to the top, I am standing on the last step and I think how I put come to this step. So I look on this number from the end. I say, okay, that could be computed like, uh, that could be decoded like 1141 plus two, yeah, plus F, at two, F by two, but this is uh, one, one letter, yeah. Um, so, F on, of any one letter is one. Uh, and uh, it could be one, one, four and 12, which is L, yeah? So it's uh, how many ways to encode, to decode one, one, four and one L, yeah? So how many ways to decode this one and this one plus one plus one? Yeah. Okay. Now, for example, I go to this one who is um, longer, bigger, and they say, okay, I want to understand how I can decode mm -hmm. you. And uh, well, it's basically only how I could decode one, one, four and the, and the plus one, because uh, if I analyze this one, it's 41. It, it couldn't be, it couldn't be letter of the alphabet. That's why it's only this, this one. And uh, if I go deeper, it's 114. So, okay, that's could be 11 plus four 
or 1 plus 14. Yeah. Uh, okay. So what should I do now? Seems like I should just analyze previous previous letters. Yeah. And uh, here is uh, previous symbols. Mm. So if I want to define function, yeah. Um, how would how would I type this function? Uh, recursive function. Do you have ideas what I should put here? Ideas, ideas, maybe just a thought or something. <laughs> or if you have questions about uh, about uh, conditions, you also can ask them. Oh, the last step. Yes, we want to. We want to define for the last step. So we want to look at previous one and uh, maybe previous previous one. How would you define it? Uh, ah, 11. Ah, yeah, that's correct. Yes. Uh, uh, that could be this one. Uh, f11 is f by 1 plus 1. Mm. And I can type here 2. So here I started to think, okay, I have some rules already. If it's a f1 symbol, so I know the length of the symbol, yeah? If it's a 1, the length of symbol is 1, it's 1. If length of symbol of two and the first thing is one, it always two because it always uh, it always two for variance, two possibilities, yes. So I already can say here that f of, of one one four is uh, f of uh, is one plus one plus two plus one. Um, it could help me, could help me, I think. Oh, probably. And also for two and something, I can have two ways, but only if this one is less than six. So conditions is tricky. Um, Okay, I would say that the function, so it's related of conditions, yeah. Uh, but it always like f uh, n minus one plus one plus f n minus two plus one. Yep, uh, but here we should also check. We should also check if uh, if uh, two symbols is correct. Mm. So yeah, uh, we have one sorry, mm. and it's already eight thirty. So I can leave you visit. So the idea is to really give you some steps, yeah? And you can try on your own. And on the next week, I send solution. So you have weekend to think how to solve it. And you can use our framework. You can use uh, everything that you learned today. And uh, yeah, I think we can stop here.
And thank you so much for your involvement. I'm really happy that I see the answers in the chat. Thank you very much, Irina. This has been fabulous. And thank you very much, everyone. And have a lovely evening. <laughs>